Okay, for this problem, we have water vapor at a high pressure of 4 megapascal and 320 degrees C enters a steam turbine operating at steady state and expands to a lower pressure of 0.6 bar. The given, the, they give us the mass flow rate of the steam, 3.6 uh, kilograms per second, and the isentropic turbine efficiency is given to be 89% stray heat transfer and kinetic potential energy effects are negligible and then you determine you calculate for part a the exit quality of the steam and then for part b the power developed by the steam turbine so we have a turbine we have flow coming in inlet state one flow going out out exit state two it's well insulated so q dot is equal to zero but we do have w dot coming out of that turbine so we can draw a control volume and apply at steady state the first law the conservation of energy it would be no accumulation or depletion of energy in the control volume as it's because it's steady state this is the cb and then you have no Q dot. I could put the Q dot and put that equal to zero minus the power out. And then you have only one mass flow rate stream. The same M dot one coming in is the M dot two going out. So it's just going to be the enthalpy one minus enthalpy two. If you did have kinetic and potential energy effects, you would just include them here, but because they're negligible, I'm just going to leave them off. And there is our first law. And so if you wanted to calculate the power, and this will be how we do it for part B, uh, that comes out of that turbine, it'll be the mass flow rate of the steam going through the turbine, and then the enthalpy change, the inlet enthalpy at state 1 minus the lower exit enthalpy at state 2. All right. If we go to the second law, we have no accumulation or depletion because of steady state of entropy in the control volume. If you did have heat transfer, you would divide it by the boundary temperature, but it's adiabatic, so that's zero. And we have the mass flow rate bringing in entropy one, taking out entropy two, and then we have entropy generation. Okay, so we use this second law to explain and, and um, uh, to, to we we use it for the isentropic turbine efficiency and it's probably good to show this on a property diagram on a temperature entropy diagram okay so we'll go ahead and put the dome and we'll put two lines of one of really low pressure and that would be for this problem uh, 0.6 bar or 60 kPa and then another line of a pressure that's at 4 megapascal or 4000 kPa I'm going to show it like this and that's 4000 uh, kPa and we have inlet state 1 somewhere right in here okay now, if you were to expand it isentropically or reversibly, then sigma dot would equal to zero and S1 would equal to S2 and it would be a straight line down on a TS diagram until it hit that exit pressure. And we would call that state two, assuming isentropic expansion through the turbine. But because we don't have sigma dot equal to zero, and we have a isentropic efficiency given in this problem statement that's less than 100%. It's going to have an exit entropy, S2. You can tell by this equation right here. S2 will be S1 plus sigma dot divided by m dot. It'll be greater. It'll be greater than the inlet. So this is our actual state 2. I'm showing both of them within the dome. Uh, if you push state 1 way up here, then you could get both of them in the superheated region, or you could get one in the superheated, one in the um, uh, two phase inside the dome. But for this problem, both are going to end up in the dome. So I, that's the way I show them. So the 
how do you use this isentropic efficiency? Well, the isentropic efficiency that turbine is defined as what is the work that would be produced um, out of that turbine actual divided by the work would be produced if it was isentropic expansion. And so in terms of the change in the enthalpy, it'll be the H1 minus the H2 actual divided by the H1 minus the H2 assuming isentropic expansion. We call that H2S. I know that looks bad, but it's a 2S. All right. So we have to get our enthalpies. So one of the things we encourage you to do is make a table of properties. We'll start over here and put uh, the state number. And we have really one, 2S, and then two actual. Those are our three states. It's like here is state one, here is state 2S, and here is state two actual. We are interested in pressures. Let's put them all in kilopascal temperatures degrees C because of the going inside the dome on this two states it's quality and then the enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram that's the key property and the entropy kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin so those are our properties that I like to list in a table to solve a problem like this we don't need to put U in we don't need to put V in you could put them in but they're just not needed Okay, so we have given information, 4 megapascal or 4,000 kilopascal and 320 degrees C. Well, we look at that and we say, well, we think that's going to be superheated and we need to use table A4 in our textbook. So let's go to table A4. Table A4, it's in the superheated water vapor. We find 4 megapascal or 40 bar or 4,000 kilopascal. They're all the same, depending on what units you prefer for pressure. You come down to find the line. Here we don't have to do any interpolation, which is good, of 320 degrees C. And these, this is the value of H, what we're looking for, and the value of S. And there's the units. So we'll just copy those values back. So we find that this is 3015.4, and this is 6.4553. Okay, so we do know the pressure of both 2S and 2 actual. That's our 0.6 bar or 60 kPa. So we know one of the properties for both of those states, it's pressure. Now 2S, well, What's the other property that you know? Well, it was isentropic expansion. So we know that you can just copy this value down. It's S is 6.4553. So we say to ourselves, aha, we know the pressure and the entropy. We have to evaluate to find out if it's in the two phase or superheated state. And we're going to find that it's two phase and then we're going to use table A3. What you do here is I'm going to jump to table A3, but we have to remember this number. The entropy is 6.4553. So we go to table A3. We find our pressure line of 0.6 bar. Okay. We come over and we focus our attention on the saturated liquid and saturated vapor entropy values and our input was 6.4553 that's between s of f at that pressure and s of g at our pressure that we know hence we conclude that it's two phase we can calculate the quality at 2s that's going to be s minus s of f divided by s of g minus s of f so let's go ahead and put our numbers in. Our actual entropy is 6.4553. The uh, uh, saturated liquids, 1.1453. Saturated vapor, 7.5320 minus 1.1453. And the quality comes in at 0 0.8.
three one four one five keep all those digits in your calculator now that we know the quality what we want is the enthalpy at state 2s well we use the quality that we just calculated that's h of f plus the quality at 2s times h of g minus h of f so here is our h of f value and here is h of g and notice they give us the difference between the two so that difference can be used here let's just write out the equation so it's 359.86 plus the quality 0 0.831415 times you could put the difference in those two values or they already gave it to you as 2293.6 so the enthalpy is 2266.83. What are the units? Kilojoule per kilogram. So we can carry that back to our table. We did a lot of work, but we got the quality to be 0.8314 and the enthalpy to be 2266.8. Okay, so at this point, we can really calculate the denominator in this expression right here. We can calculate the work that the turbine would produce if it would be isentropic expansion. That would be just H1 minus H2S. And for this problem, that comes in to be 748.57. Kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, now they gave us the isentropic efficiency, so we can use this equation again to calculate the work that's actually produced, that's the numerator up here, which is simply the isentropic efficiency of the turbine times the isentropic work. So it's 89% of 748, let me write that out, 0.89 times... 748.57 so that comes in at 666.23 kilojoules per kilogram then we look at it so now we can actually calculate what h2 is from this equation um, let me write it down here i wanted to write it up there but run out of room h2 is equal to the h1 minus the work actual so in this case our h2 actual is our h1 3015.4 minus our 666.23 and it comes in at 2349.2 or 17 230 49.2 good enough now so so it has you can actually calculate the entropy if you wanted to it would be a little larger or higher value but we don't really need that what we are asked to solve for is the the quality at state 2 that's leaving so let's go back to table a3 and remember 2349.2 so if you want to calculate the quality at state 2 actual, instead of using entropy, you use enthalpy, H of F divided by H of FG. Okay, so we're bringing in our value of enthalpy at state 2, 2349.17 minus S of F. 359.86 divided by HFG 2293.6 and that quality at state 2 let me leave it here is equal to 0 0.8673 so before it was around 83% now it's around 87% it's closer it's closer to the saturated vapor line inside the dome, just like we've shown on this TS diagram. Okay, 
So there it is. There's our value of the exit quality of the steam. Now, what is the power developed by the turbine? Well, they do want it in kilowatts, and they did give us the mass flow rate. So um, and we already talked about that equation right here. So we'll just do the W dot out of the turbine is the mass flow rate times the change in the enthalpy, which is simply our actual specific work of the turbine, which is our mass flow rate of 3.6 kilograms per second. And then the specific work was right here, 6.23 kilojoules per kilogram. The kilograms go, and we're left with kilowatts. So W dot comes in at 2.398 kilowatts. That's the answer for part B. Well, I hope uh, this was helpful. Thank you for your attention.